uninsured residents now have some relief. Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Denise Douglas. The state Senate gives final approval to an emergency bill that will help those who couldn't get on Maryland's health exchange website and purchase insurance in time for the January 1st deadline. Rochelle Metzger explains from Annapolis. The governor wasted no time signing the Maryland health insurance plan into law. The emergency legislation goes into effect right away, and it will help people who were unable to enroll in private plans through the state's online health care exchange because of computer problems. Let's sign this bill. Calling it a short-term fix, the legislation expands enrollment in a decade-old state-run plan that was originally created to help people who had problems finding coverage because of pre-existing conditions. What we're able to do is use the infrastructure of the safety net plan that existed in Maryland and extend that so it can still be a safety net for the few people who really have had uh, trouble enrolling on the website and really need coverage. If they are unable to get covered, they will be able to um, call the call center and get referred over to a program that can help um, even if the website isn't working for them. We're seeing fewer and fewer people running into that problem. Applicants will have to provide evidence that they attempted to use the website and pay a premium. Enrollment will stay open until March 31st. There's a sliding fee for the high-risk pool that has been in effect prior to January 1. So the same uh, rate structure sliding fee will be available now. State officials expect only a few hundred people to sign up because the four insurance carriers involved with the state exchange have also offered retroactive coverage. Some have, uh, some have asked me, well, why are we doing this when it affects so few people? The reason we do this is because if it affects just one family, it is worth the effort. The administration isn't saying exactly how much the plan will cost. It's also unclear how residents will prove that they tried to enroll. Nonetheless, officials say it's a backup plan for those who need it. As for the website, the governor says they're still working on it. They're making progress. People are able to sign up. This is really just a backup for people who had issues or for whatever reason are still having issues. This way they can purchase a plan that's retroactive to January 1st and in the coming months retroactive to February 1st and March 1st. In Annapolis, I'm Rochelle Metzger. Back to you all in the studio. Thank you, Rochelle. The Senate passed the legislation Wednesday after voting 34 to 7 to adopt a change made by the House of Delegates. That change requires the Maryland Health Insurance Plan to report to legislative panels about how enrollment is going for people who sought coverage by January 1st. Well, now turning to a story that would definitely concern a lot of parents. An elementary school student is hospitalized after an alleged beating incident. Byron Scott joins us now yeah. with that. Now, what's going on? Well, it's an evolving story, Denise. Uh, Prince George's County school officials investigated the incident that sent a seven-year-old girl to the hospital. Now, it happened on Tuesday morning at Thomas Claggett Elementary School in District Heights. Now, the parents of the little girl say their daughter was attacked by four classmates and knocked unconscious. School officials say the incident happened in the gymnasium, but they are still investigating what exactly transpired. Now, children who were leaving school with their parents say told CTV News that the kids were playing around and then it escalated. Parents say the incident is very upsetting. It's very concerning because you send your children to school, you want them to be safe, and my whole thing was where's the supervision? Where were the teachers? What's happened? Uh, that, if that happened, that's <laughs> unbelievable. If that's what really happened. But I... Like I said, I personally didn't hear anything myself. Now, the district sent home a letter with parents which read in part, during indoor recess for kindergartners and first graders yesterday, a child was injured and taken by paramedics to the hospital and later released. Okay, Please. very interesting. Now, uh, what's next? Is the school taking any action in addition to that letter? Well, I talked to school officials, and they won't even say whether the child was knocked unconscious. They hope they were saying uh, to release a statement at some point today. Okay, yeah. well, we'll keep Stand track on that. Sure. Yeah, thank you. As police continue to investigate the shooting at Columbia Mall today, we get a look at some new evidence that they have released. This is the missing persons report filed by the mother of the shooter, Darian Aguilar. Aguilar left the home he shared with her in College Park to go to work on Saturday. When he didn't show up at Dunkin' Donuts, his mother contacted police. In addition, Howard County police say in his journal, Aguilar ind indicated that he needed mental help. He also mentions using marijuana and expresses thoughts of wanting to die. Aguilar gunned down two people at the mall before turning the gun on himself. 
Nine residents are displaced and firefighters injured following a two-alarm fire in Laurel last night at, three, at a three-unit complex. Emergency crews responded to the 400 block of Compton Avenue around 7 p.m. They found thick smoke and heavy fire coming from a two-story townhouse. It took emergency responders more than 45 minutes to completely extinguish the flames. And at one point, firefighters had to evacuate the building. All three homes in that structure were affected. When I walked in, I seen the flames. The place was really on fire. I couldn't get back on this road for nothing. They had everything blocked. They had everything blocked. They had so many fire, fire trucks here. I'm just glad the guy went home. It's, it's a tragedy. I mean, you know, it's, it, you don't look at it at, at, right here at your, where you live at, you know? It's a shame. It is a shame. Like I said, he was a nice guy. Well, I'm sure they'll probably tear it down and rebuild again. Firefighters from surrounding areas, including Howard and Anne Arundel counties, assisted in combating the blaze. One Laurel firefighter received burn injuries to both of his ears. He has been treated and released from the hospital. A cause has not been determined, but damage is estimated at $300,000, and all seven adults and two children were displaced. Temperatures may be rising now, but our recent cold weather has claimed the lives of several Maryland residents. The Department of Health and Mental Hygiene says a total of 11 people have died across the state due to weather-related conditions. This number includes two men from Prince George's County. You are watching CTV News, and I'm Denise Douglas.